first 40 minutes of Sicario are some of the best in recent memory, culminating in the brilliance that is the Juarez border crossing bridge sequence. So we're diving in, and for this entry into our Brilliant Moment series, we're looking at the structure of tension in Villeneuve's Sicario. After an honorable mention-worthy raid on an abandoned Arizona house led by FBI agent Kate Maser reveals dozens of bodies inside the drywall and explosives rigged in the shed, Kate finds herself offered an opportunity on an interagency task force to get the men who were really responsible for the violence. But there's something rotten in Denmark. Maybe it's the smug need-to-know attitude of the besandled Josh Brolin or the implication that the somewhere near El Paso they'll be going to is actually Juarez, Mexico. And somewhere between the dangerous mystery of Benicio del Toro Alejandro, the serious military hardware they're sporting, and the warnings about where an attempt will be made, we realize that we're on a crash course with violence. Delta, if you can identify yourself so everyone knows who to hide behind if it's a fan. So, when Johan Johansson's brilliantly grimy score swells for the first time as we arrive in cartel-controlled Mexican border town, we know something's going down. And the tension mounts and mounts and mounts and mounts. The convoy has to divert when they hear gunshots. They arrive at the Juarez prison to collect the prisoner. If they try anything, it won't be at the border. They're tailed by a rogue state police officer. My spotter vehicle, 9 o'clock. And finally, when we've just about cut our backsides on the edge of our seats, we get back to the border and gridlock. Okay, it's a f*** up. And this is where we expect it. We've been told three times already that the most likely attempt will be here, at the border. And here we are, stuck in traffic, surrounded by cars, any of which could hold the enemy. Especially this one here, and that one there. The rules of engagement are clear. We can't fire until they fire. We can't exit the car until they do. So we sit and we wait, and we wait, and we wait. And the simple act of rolling down a window is transformed from mundane to lethal. The tension builds, and we're about ready to bust when we get our moment. Right? What a build up, what a climax. If you're a nail biter, we're so sorry about your stubs. If you're a pan shitter, well, well that's, that's gotta be rough, man. So, what makes this so goddamn brilliant? In a word, it's tension. What makes this tension? How does Villeneuve do that? Well, let's zoom out a bit and take a look at the bridge sequence as a whole. If this is the bridge sequence from here to here at about four minutes long, these parts are just tense waiting, these parts are ratcheting up the tension, these are the big crescendos, and this, all of just nine seconds, is the action. It's mostly just waiting. It's just baiting breath and baiting breath and baiting breath. It's promises of violence that keep not coming. How many ways does Villeneuve delay the action here? First, we don't know where they are. Then we open our windows and wait. Then we can't get out because of the rules of engagement. Then we're in their car, waiting for them to muster up the courage to get out. Then they get out, and we're trying to de-escalate. And then there's the talking, the decision point. Do you want to die? And then, only then, about three minutes from the beginning of this sequence, do we get our violence. But that's not all. If you watch the whole Juarez sequence, you know we've actually been doing this for about 13 minutes. This is tense waiting. This is ratcheting up the tension. These are the big crescendos. These moments are scary, silent, waiting moments that break it up, kind of the calm before the storm. And at this distance, the violence just looks like this. That's nearly 13 whole minutes, built entirely around nine seconds of violence. Villeneuve takes his time with it. 
where a lesser director might be tempted to rush to the action -y parts, Villeneuve knows that the morbid details are way more interesting. 30 seconds sitting, waiting in an alley isn't boredom. It's one of the most exciting moments of the sequence because we're with Kate, looking around every corner for when things pop off, and Villeneuve has given us enough clues that things will pop off. And that's what tension is. Apprehension about something we sort of see coming, but not exactly what, and not exactly when, and not exactly how. It is a burlesque strip show of violence. It is incremental promises of what's to come followed by delays, and when we think it's nearly upon us, it's still minutes away. And if we're being entirely honest, the film really starts getting our hearts pumping well before we get to Juarez. You can follow along on our infographic in the video description to see the full landscape, but Villeneuve is planting suspicions and hints of violence to come for nearly the entire movie, and it is all driving towards just this nine brief seconds of brutal violence. Which brings us to the violence itself. It is not glossy or slick or clever. There are no tactics to the violence, no dodging or back and forths or clever maneuvering. Instead, it's just a series of executions. Sudden, swift, efficient, humorless. Look at how the violence ebbs and flows in a straight action film where the details of the action are the plot. It's an entirely different thing than Sicario, where the violence is simply a plot point, emphasis on point. It is a perfect capstone on top of a brilliantly structured series of sequences with smart pacing down to the shot and frame level. Here is our buildup, shot by shot. Alejandro is trying to convince them not to do it. One long push as the kettle is boiling, two shorter shots as the music crescendo. Here is the instant that the enemy first moves, and then boom, 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 five quick shots in three seconds. And just as as soon as it started, it's over. We get a slow shot, like a blow-off valve, and then we return to Kate. This is an excellent time for us to mention that this entire sequence, and most of the whole film, is structured around her POV. She is our audience surrogate, reacting as we react, watching as we watch. Although the camera sometimes takes on an omniscient perspective, it is usually constrained to things she can see and often to her explicit point of view. And as we'll see after every moment of violence, we return to Kate for her reaction. So we get it here, and just like we said, cut directly to her POV as it pivots from the first card to the second, and then we almost precisely repeat the pattern. Stand off, try to talk them out of it, music swells, shots quicken, one of them makes a tiny move, and then boom. Four shots in three seconds, and they're all dead, almost exactly like the first card. We've established a pattern and we've repeated it, but the music doesn't let up. So just like before, we return to Kate, we get her reaction, we cut to her POV. It scans the field, and then out of the corner of her eye, we see the final black-clad shooter, a state police, exactly what we'd been warned about. The music swells, the shots quicken, and then Kate moves. Just as each moment of violence previously hinged around one of the Sonora cartel members moving first, this time Kate is the target, and the pattern that Villeneuve has established against the cartel members is now turned against her. Kate's flinch sets it off. We're so in tune with the pattern that now it's being used against our own surrogate, and it's about 3,000 times as effective. The pacing, the swell, the dread is all pointed at us. So, just like the pattern dictates, Kate flinches and boom. Four shots of violence in three seconds. A reaction from Kate, and then it's over. The rule of threes has been satisfied. Introduction, reinforcement, subversion. Finally, the promise that was made long ago has been kept. The music changes from drone to a beat, and they're free. With one final swell of dread at the violence they left in their wake, the sequence, a culmination of 30 minutes of buildup, is complete. Unfortunately, the rest of the film never quite lives up to this level of brilliance. Sure, the opening set piece succeeds by following this formula at a smaller level, but the rest of the film wraps itself up a bit too much in the plot and lingers a bit too long on some of the violence to dedicate enough time to building us up to the same fever pitch of tension. So, why is this moment so brilliant? Because it's a meticulously executed explosion of violence that has almost 30 minutes of tension supporting it. Because it's the culmination of an entire act's worth of anxiety and because it is a brilliantly paced microcosm of the entire film's structure thus far, creating, subverting, and manipulating our expectations to a perfect climax. So, what do you think? Any more thoughts about this particular moment? Any other moments you'd like us to take a long, hard look at? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe for more Cinefix Movie Lists.